So, have you ever, without realizing, stepped onto an escalator that wasn't working, expecting it to be moving and instead being hit with that strange interruption as if the rhythm or flow of your movement had been disrupted? That's a great example of the power of mental conditioning and repetition, using working escalators over and over and over again, conditions our mind to expect a moving escalator when we approach and when we take a step on it, we're expecting it to be moving. And what was once scary and difficult to, to, to do when we were a child in time and with repetition becomes conditioned, learned, and expected. It's exactly the same with anything we experience. Experiences that take us up and make us feel incredible, like love, delicious food, sex, whatever or experiences that hurt us. Our mind is like clay and it adapts and it molds itself to learn through each experience that we have in order to help guide us and protect us throughout our life. Let's say, for example, uh, you've had a breakup in the past that hurt so much. Those experiences are now conditioned mentally so strongly that you might approach new relationships with excessive fear, low self-esteem, or even avoid relationships altogether. When fear starts to dictate our life, we can identify it as a disability and something important that needs to be addressed. Fear should not be regarded as an enemy. It's there instead to help us and to protect us. And it's important that we, we, we know that and not make uh, fear something to be afraid of or something that we're trying to get rid of. The underlying re reason for it is to protect us. Protect us from getting killed, hurt or killed. I'll give you an example. The, it's designed for, let's say, if we're walking through the woods and there's a corner that we usually pass, and one day we pass the corner and there's a tiger that jumps up. We get away, we survive, but then the next day and the day after that, approaching the same corner, we're not going to approach it the same way. This time there's going to be a conditioned fear response that's either going to make us approach that corner with more anxiety and more judgment or to avoid the corner altogether. And it, this principle is what affects um, everything else, like if you've been through a breakup or whatever, it's the exact same thing. So when you're hurt in a relationship, you go into your new relationship with more anxiety, with more caution, and it's just there to protect us, okay? So the important thing is just to be aware of that and not let that control us. <clears throat> so in the same way, it works on the opposite end of the spectrum. So you have the fear and the pain that creates anxiety, future anxiety, or whatever. In the same way, when we experience pleasant feelings, such as sex, tasty food, like sugar, salty food, carbs, you know, that give us that sugar sp spike, drugs that make us feel better, or even people, you know, relationships that make us feel more complete, more uh, comfortable, more co confident. 
So we, once again, we need to go through the same process of, we once again go through the same process of conditioning our minds. But this time, when it's with things that are pleasant, the conditioning is no longer to avoid those things, but to wind up depending on those things for our happiness, which again is uh, dangerous because everything external doesn't last forever. So the less we can depend on external things, the better. Don't want to go into all of that. For now, the focus of this is uh, to, to have awareness of what's going on and how our mind works. Okay, I, I call it a sticky mind. So going through life with a sticky mind, whether it's something that hurts you or something that feels amazing, allowing your mind to become conditioned by those events is... Um, it's something that, you know, you want to be more in control of rather than letting your mind just stick. And the, the, if something good happens, your mind will be attracted to it. But then if you keep repeating it, let, let's say you love sex and you start having sex every day or five times a day, your mind will start to stick to that. And that will become normal. And when you take that away, it's when you're going to suffer. Um, it's the works on the other end of the spectrum too. If you're suffering every day, suffering every day, you're, you, again, you can condition your, your mind to, to believe that you're, you have low self-esteem or you are incomplete or you lack. Anyway, so going through life with a sticky mind like this means that we'll allow the conditioning to control us. And this is where, again, awareness is so important. With awareness, we can live in moderation, be aware of all these things, and observe and be aware of how much we're being conditioned by the things that we do repetitively every day. So keeping an eye on the things that you do every day, you know, again, awareness, is so key because then you can figure out how it's all affecting, you know, you. Are, are the things that you do every day, are they... Are they good for your mind? You know, are they helping you be more confident? So I have found that acquiring a powerful position or a powerful stance helps me to regain confidence. What do I mean for that? For example, helping other people has been a powerful thing for me because subconsciously when you help someone else, you're telling yourself, very deep subconscious level that you're just not aware of, but you tell yourself subconsciously that I must be in a position, I must be a powerful person, or I must be in a position of power if I'm able to offer assistance and guidance to someone else. You tell yourself that you're a strong person. Only a strong person would be able to help someone else tells you that you're strong, you're wise. So it's, it's in a way, it's affirming. It helps you with affirmations. Now, affirmations can be difficult if you don't believe them. But if you put yourself in a position where you will believe the affirmations, for example, like helping other people, then your affirmations become more believable and you start affirming without realizing it. You'll have positive self-talk without even realizing it. You'll just be wandering around going, just thinking without realizing that, oh, how, how great you are for, for being helpful, yeah? And this is good. This is positive. It's not arrogance. This is how you build up self-esteem and confidence and a positive self-image of yourself. You know, it, um, it also tells you deep inside, or I'll tell you how it affects me, it tells me deep inside that I'm a good person <laughs> and Again, it sounds arrogant, but we tell ourselves constantly that we're bad, that we're weak. So when you help others, you subconsciously tell yourself that you're a good person for being selfless and for wanting to, you know, the best for others. And it makes you feel better about yourself. It will increase your confidence, your personal self-image, will help you sleep at night. It will just enhance your entire life. It will make you more attractive as well. Because when you love yourself, 
you will become more whole, you will need less things from outside to make you feel better. You will start to love yourself. You will need less validation from people around you. You will be able to validate yourself that you're a good person. So, like I said, this all takes place on a very deep psychological level that most people are just not aware of and will never be aware of. Instead, when we suffer or have a, a bad experience, we take the place of a victim. So rather than taking that, like I said, a powerful position, helping other people, or you can be creative and think of something else, or, you know, teaching is incredible. You know, teachers, I mean, it's a great way to build confidence by teaching, you know. So um, rather than taking a position of power, what we do, what we tend to do is the first thing we tend to do is we tend to take the role of a victim. And what does a victim want? It wants help. So we start seeking, we start seeking help, seeking healing, seeking advice, seeking ourselves, trying to, people traveling, trying to find themselves. Seeking, 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 rather than being, 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 rather than being more powerful. And allowing that repetition in time, as I was talking about in the beginning of the video, to just take its course. You put yourself in a position of power, you do affirmations, do them every day, repeat them, you will start to recondition your mind. You see, the way the mind works, it's interesting. It's kind of like a digestive system. It starts off with the eyes, the ears, the mouth, the touch. All that feeds into the mind. Okay, and then it starts to slowly work its way back into the mind. So at first, you've got all the experiences coming in. Then there's the next level, which is like, it starts to, you know, the thinking, the creative thinking. It starts to use all that stuff. And then it filters back, and only with each level, it decides to keep what's most important. So the thoughts that you keep thinking about and thinking about, your mind starts to believe these must be important. And it starts to filter back and back and back until it becomes goes from thoughts to beliefs. When you start thinking, that's what beliefs are. Beliefs are thoughts that you've repeated so much that they now become a belief. And when it becomes a belief, it then starts to fall into your instinctual, in, into the spine and into the nervous system. And then when it's there, it becomes very difficult to control. And when you walk into a new relationship, you're just, the fear happens because it's become instinctual. It's just your adrenaline goes and this is how our mind works. Our mind, it goes through all these stages in order so that when we go around the corner and the tiger jumps out, we're not going to like be thinking about it like, oh, wait, it's a tiger. Should I jump out? And No, it's, it's now instinctual. It's going to trigger adrenaline. It's going to trigger fight or flight. Uh, so for most of us, including myself, um, you know, with all the negative thinking, with all the experiences and not being aware of all this stuff, that's so important, a lot of this has now become instinctual. So you go into the world with anxiety, you go into the world with fear, you go into the world, you go into relationships with anxiety and fear, or whatever situation it is, it's now become built in. It doesn't mean it's too late. All it means is it's going to take a bit longer and it's going to take persistence and time and conditioning. Just like the escalator. You do it and you do it and you do it again. You're going to need to go into a relationship and be confident. You're going to need to practice, go on dates or whatever it is, okay? So th that's how it all works. So in case you're wondering, I actually have written stuff out for a change and I'm reading, so that's good. <laughs> I don't know if it helps or not, but it's uh, making it better. So... Uh, another good technique is to use affirmations, really great technique every day, but it's important to use affirmations that you truly believe in, otherwise you're just like wasting your time just repeating a bunch of words. You need to believe those affirmations, and the affirmations need to come from a position of power. So you don't want to s affirm stuff like, I want to be happy one day, no, because what you're telling yourself is you're not happy now. You want to affirm things like, I am so grateful and thankful for 
the happiness that I have within me or the strength that I have within me. Or I'm so grateful and thankful for the amazing energy and power and the confidence that dwells within me and manifests more and more each day. Okay, so stuff like that, fill a whole page with it. And just you'll feel how it feels so good with every line you, you do. So the more and more, do the affirmations every day. This trick is you've got to do this stuff every day. If you really want to change the way you, you're, if you want to be more confident, it's going to take work, okay? It's going to take this kind of work. So what usually happens after a traumatic experience like a breakup or loss is that we reinforce those incidents in our head and play it over and over a hundred times with negative self-talk. Like, oh, blah, you know, you're repeating it, so you're conditioning yourself to become weaker. And you basically need to change that cycle. All right? It's, it's critical to allow your feelings out, so if you're sad and angry, let them all out. That's fine. But be aware of what's going on so that once you've allowed all this stuff out, you know that what you ultimately need to do is to guide yourself back into a position of power, and, as I said, um, helping other people, teaching, if you can, doing affirmations. Um, and, you know, I have a list I'll share with you. I've listed, and I recommend this to everyone, to list all the things that make you feel good and list all the things that make you feel bad. The things that energize you versus the things that drain, deplete you. For me, what energizes me here, I've written them down. Writing affirmations. Anything creative. So drawing, making music. Meditation. Believe it or not, you're going to be shocked, but cold shower I put down. Or jumping into the cold Pacific Ocean. It energizes me. It, I hate doing it, but once after I've done it, I feel alive and amazing. <laughs> But that's a tough one. I don't expect everyone to do that. Hiking, traveling, getting out, and, and just doing some traveling every day, whether it's just a five-minute drive or a half-an-hour hike or a walk. We need to get out. It's, it helps us feel like we've accomplished something and, and done something. Yoga, for me, I, it's, it's good. I haven't done it for a long time. Jiu-Jitsu, for me, or mixed martial arts. Playing the guitar, creativity again. Uh, we're listening to and watching spiritual videos, you know, or listening to gurus. And what that has to do with is learning. Learning is important. So, you know, going to school or doing something where you're learning something new, being challenged is so important. Most of us that have these problems, you know, uh, are have a high intelligence levels. Yeah, so we need to be challenged. And I think that's the thing. It's like, you know, having something in your life that challenges you, whether it's a sport activity or, okay, giving, as I mentioned before, giving, helping other people. Powerful, because you put yourself in a position of power. Um, and praying, I've put down. Praying, I'm not a religious person, but when you pray, again, like especially before bed, it's, it's so powerful because you, you know, Again, it makes you feel like a better person because you're praying for other people, the goodness of others. Like, I'm praying for the health of my family, the health of my friends. And, you know, you're also pray, praying includes grateful, being grateful for what you have. All right, so a 20-minute video. I thought um, writing it all out would make it quicker. I guess it didn't, but I hope this video helps, and I'm going to keep making more of these and hopefully... Oh, making videos for me has helped tremendously. That's a big thing on my list. Because I've had issues with confidence and speaking, you know, especially speaking in front of people. So being able to like speak in front of, you know, in a, in a video just for myself, it helps me to learn how to speak and to keep focused and not to get sidetracked. And I'm not the best at this, but I hope that in time I will become better at this. And uh, I've noticed I've been getting lags with the audio and video of my videos, and I probably this video is going to suffer the same thing, but I, if it does, I hope you guys put up with it. Thanks.